this point, the wire did get through the insulation. But luckily, once again, it did not melt into the other conductors. So, I've got quite the job ahead of me. Welcome to part three of the Johnson Viking 2 transmitter repair. You saw in part one, the initial inspection, part two, I repaired the power supply. In part three, we have to repair that melted wiring from overcurrent in the past on the six volt AC line. I'm also gonna give this thing a modulation check after I fix those issues and see if the transmitter needs anything else. So this is part three of the Johnson Viking 2 repair. In this video, I'm going to clean up this area here, which has been highly modified with some variable capacitors. This is the crystal socket. So there's a lot going on here that all needs to be stripped out and put back to stock. And also we have the VFO cabling coming in, which somebody's been playing with. I need to inspect that. But the bigger problem is the green wiring that you see down here which is the filament circuit. It had a thermal meltdown because somebody at one time plugged something wrong or something shorted into the accessory socket and it melted down the wiring because Johnson didn't fuse the filament wires. So this could happen not only if you connect something wrong here, but it could also happen say if a tube shorted or some wiring on the chassis somehow contacted ground pull excessive current and melt the wiring. So it's probably a good opportunity to add a fuse. The other thing we're going to do is clean up the modulation section, inspect everything, remove these two added oil filled caps and give this thing a test monitoring with an external receiver. So I'm going to start this process by just getting in here and clipping this stuff out. It doesn't belong here. Same old thing, no reason to check the documents because it doesn't belong here. So I'm going to get it out of here, check the print, put it back to stock. I about got this area cleaned up, but I'm looking at this switch for the crystal select. If you look, it's only a three position switch. But if you look at the front, it was supposed to be a ten position switch with zero being VFO. So this is not going to work. Luckily, I have one of the stock replacements. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in. Well, now that I had that switch out of the way, you can see I've got pretty good access into this area with the damaged filament wiring. So I'm going to go ahead and get that replaced. So if you look close here, you can see the insulation got blistering hot when it had that overcurrent situation. So I'm going to cut some of the wire lacing, get that out of there, put in some new wiring with fuse protection. Well, lucky for me, when this wire got hot, it did not melt into the other wires of the harness. I don't know how that is, but it's great because I can just cut this, lift this out of the way, and put in the new runner. Alright, so you can see near the oscillator tube, the wire did get through the insulation. This was at a tie point in the harness, but once again, luckily, it did not melt into the other conductors. So following the smoke path, you can see all the wiring on this half of the Viking 2 has the melting, but if you go on to this side, it wasn't affected, which is kind of strange. Anyway, that will at least cut half of the work out for me. It's still going to be quite the job. So I've decided to make this easier. I'm going to clip the filament wires where they land. That way I can take this out in pieces. I don't have to struggle so much with that harness. So revisiting my comment about everything on this side of the Viking not melted and everything over here is I found the common denominator. It's the six volt filament lamp. So you can see the wire coming into it is bubbled, but leaving it, it's not. And it goes up here to this terminal. So obviously at one time, 
is short developed. Maybe somebody is in here working. I have no idea. I'm going to buzz this out, but that is the common denominator right there, the pilot lamp. So the short was not on the VFO output socket like I originally thought. So with this new information, I've decided to mount a fuse holder right here. I'm going to bring the filament line in and fuse this accordingly for the normal current draw for the tubes, lights, etc. So if that something like this ever happens again, it'll just pop a fuse. Well, there's a the damaged wire. I got it all pulled out. There's a runner going to the power light. And you can see the little runners that went to the tube sockets. Now it's time to put in the new wiring. And by the way, I did get that fuse holder installed. So there's the filament wire coming off the power transformer. So these runners will now go through the fuse and then feed the radio. All right, got the new six volt wiring installed. Went okay, took a lot of time. Next, I need to get that switch back in there, clean this area up, get everything zip tied down, and we'll try to fire it up. Here's the initial power up of the Viking 2. After repairing that damaged wiring, I'm going to use a Variac. This is a home brew. It looks like a Heath kit, but it's not. I'm going to bring her up nice and slow. I've got the filament switch on, which will bring up that 6 volt AC and hopefully all the tubes will come on. Alright, looking around the back I see the filament light is starting to glow. That's a really good sign because if we had a short we would be seeing that right now on the Variac. So there's about 80 volts. We'll take a peek around the top make sure I see all the tubes coming on. up a little bit more. Yep. I see tube filaments. Good sign. So we're going to take it down. And next I'm going to put an amp meter in line with that 6 volt AC fuse holder so we can see what the actual current is being pulled by the Viking 2's filament. Well, I got my Beckman meter set up on 10 amps AC. You can see when I bring up the Variac, there's about 2 amps, a little over 3 amps. And the reason I want to check this is I need to know what is the proper size fuse to put in that filament circuit. So what I'm going to do is bring her up full bore, keep an eye on it. Of course it's going to go up and then come back down because as the heaters heat up, the resistance changes. So you can see we're pulling over 5 amps already. There's 6 amps. So those filaments demand some current. There she is all the way up. A little over 6 amps. So I think safely I should just fuse it at 10. Either way it will protect the wiring. So I installed that 10 amp fuse. So now the Viking 2 is plugged right into the wall. We're going to hit it with full power and make sure that the filament circuit handles it. Here we go. Good sign. So 10 amps it is. We'll give things a chance to warm up. Make sure that all those tubes are still on. And then I'll hook up the VFO and we'll make sure that the transmitter still works after all that. All right, so now we're going to test the modulation section on the Viking 2. I've done very little to that. I cleaned up some of those additional caps that you saw. But before I go any further, I want to know, is it worth doing any more, or is she good to go as is? So I'm using this National 173 up here to monitor our signal. There we are on frequency. Let's bring up the modulation. One, two. So there she is. She's talking. 
Here's my modulation current. All kinds of uh, forward swing on the old watt meter. She's really working good. Boy, is that crystal clear. So guess what? I'm not going to do any more audio work to that one. I don't think I can make it any better than what it is. All right, so another Johnson Viking 2 successful repair here at D-Lab Electronics. Well, how do you feel about that repair? It was very time consuming. So why do you do it? Unfortunately, I love it. <laughs> There's no money in it, but it's fun to do. Yeah. That's what's important. It is. That's how I relax. So, a glass of wine for your hard day's work. Right. Cheers. Your, your beer's not in the picture, but anyway, you guys heard it. <laughs>